EV sales are growing rapidly worldwide. While some viewers spend a considerable amount of time and effort searching for just one example that will back up the opinion that EV sales are running out of steam and will soon disappear, I much prefer to look at the bigger picture and you don't get much bigger than the whole world. Dave takes it on, looks at what's really going on. By the way, if you like this content, please subscribe. Okay, spoiler alert, here are the headlines. Global EV sales in Q1 2025 are up. Europe saw a 28% growth, America 18% growth, China 55% growth. Look all you like, but sales are booming. Breaking that down into regions. Despite the massive upheaval from tariffs that's threatening the very existence of traditional ICE cars, EVs are on the rise. And when I say EVs, this is 100% battery EVs only, no hybrids. Europe EV sales, that's EU, UK and EFTA, European Free Trade Association, uh, rose to 573,500 in Q1, 28% more than last year. The market share grew to 16.9% 16, 16 from 132 the year before. Every sixth car is now a full BEV. The UK remained the largest market, growing 43%, while second place Germany grew 39%. China, the world's largest car market, continues to astound. 1,640,000 BVs sold in Q1, more than 55% 55, 55 higher than Q1 2024. One quarter of all cars sold now in China are full BVs. And China has emerged as the largest, largest supplier of vehicles to the rest of the world, with companies like BYD, NIO and Xpeng. Despite or possibly because of Trump's deranged tariff policy, we've seen the legacy auto ice sales collapse and EV sales grow. 301,000 new EV sales, more than 18% higher in 2024. The US lags the world with 78% still embedded firmly in the past with fossil fuels and only one in 12 cars now full BEVs. With the removal of federal tax credits threatened by the end of 2025, it's likely to be a surge ahead of that, but then obviously will follow a corresponding drop. We'll look at EV sales from the start, around 2010 to the end of last year, sees a really solid growth every single year, while the ICE sales saw a rise until 2016, then a steady fall ever since. The transition to 100% BVs is in full swing, just faster in some places than others. Sales of BVs started 2010 with, would you believe it, just a few thousand sales worldwide. Today in 2025, we're heading towards projected 20 million. By the way, if you want to support the channel, please have a look below at our memberships and the benefits they offer. I've often said that the success or failure of EVs is not down to how many are sold. That's a number that will take quite some time to grow as new factories need to be built and new supply chains need to be established. In the UK, we sell 2 million new cars a year and we have 35 million cars on the road. So even if everyone, everybody bought an EV tomorrow, it would still take more than a decade to complete the transition. It's not going to happen tomorrow. But the key to every transformational industry or technology is far more governed by the fall in sales of the old outgoing industries or technology. And that is doubly so if that old technology was already well past its peak before the new one actually arrived. The ICE industry, petrol and diesel cars, was well over 100 years old before the newcomer EVs even arrived. It had had an amazing run of success, far longer than many predicted, but we need to look at that in more detail because it's been living on borrowed time for longer than most people realise. Every product has its lifespan. We no longer watch black and white TV, nor heat our houses with coal, nor use horses for moving large cargoes. Each reached then passed its natural lifespan. Ice cars, like it or not, also have a finite lifespan. And all the indications are that it was reached about a decade ago. But that peak was itself totally artificial. So a quick look back at the industry is um, one of the many collapses, bankruptcies, government bailouts, everything involved just to try and keep it going 
mainly because it employed so many people. And none of it worked, because almost without exception, every single automaker worldwide is heavily in debt. And I mean really heavily. We show here a table, and the list is topped off by a Chinese company. It's property and finance, nothing to do with cars. But after that, long, very long, very, very long list of the world's auto giants. VW, Toyota, Ford, General Motors, BMW, Mercedes, Hyundai, Renault, Nissan, Stel Yeah, it's a, an amazing list, and an equally long list could be made just choosing all those motor companies that didn't make it this far and went bust or were bought out over the last half century. British Leyland, Austin, Morris, Rover, Riley, Triumph, Woolsey, Jaguar, Hillman, Singer, Sunbeam. Not such a bright future for them. The legacy auto industry has been living on borrowed time for over half a century, propped up by the belief that they must be supported or the political fallout would destroy the then government of the day. Unfortunately for them, the arrival of the EV put an end to all of that. Instead of the choice of chucking thousands of skilled workers onto the scrap heap or benefits, they could now simply be switched into the new opportunity that EVs offered. And in the UK, it's already happened, particularly up in the northeast. But the EV success is also the ice downfall because once government had to bail out Legacy Auto, now they don't. Hence, we see launch after launch of new EV factories. And the outcome's pretty predictable. Without that financial bailout, and with more than half their market already wiped out, some of that because we're not buying as many, and the rest is because we're now buying new EVs instead, Legacy Auto must adapt or die. And the sad news is that for years now, Legacy Auto has been peddling the lies about EVs being useless, catching fire, no range, no charging infrastructure, massive depreciation, and all the rest. They have effectively killed their only hope that they too can join in on the boom that is EVs, because ICE is doomed. ICE new car sales everywhere past the peak. In the UK that occurred around 2016, it actually had reached a plateau. Growth effectively stopped in about 2014, struggled on for a few more years, then started the final collapse in 2017. And when we see this table from Haycar, we need to understand that from 2017 onwards, EVs accounted for a growing percentage of new car sales. And so in 2024, that would reach 20%. So the 2024 figure of 1,952,778 is actually only 1.5 million versus the 2.5 million they hit in 2016 with virtually no EVs. The harsh reality is that buyers have stopped buying ICE, ICE cars in anything like the same numbers. Although we cling on to the familiar, the writing was already on the wall before EVs hit the mass market. ICE had reached its peak of development after a run of 100 years. The last quarter century saw very little improvement in engine efficiency or economy. Yeah, many will cite the amazing miles being on the sum of the cars on sale, but that's just mask the fact that it was only possible by halving the size of the engines. They now make tiny little three-cylinder engines with way under a litre capacity. These are already suffering vastly because today's cars are simply bigger and heavier than ever, thanks to safety improvements. ICE also suffered from offering better warranties. Up from one year, the average now three years, with an odd one or two offering five or seven years. These meant that there was simply no need any longer to swap your car every two years. Now, add in a growing movement worldwide to do something about climate change and pollution, and you had the perfect storm for the end of the ICE industry. But they were not going to go without a fight. Of course they weren't. They also had the backing of the oil giants, who relied totally on the car industry for well over half its sales and well over half of its profits. A head-on fight was inevitable. But the conclusion's already determined. It's just a matter of time. And the trouble is, we're actually fighting the wrong battles. 
There is a virtual war going on at the moment between those that believe we, humans, have caused all this climate change stuff and those that dig out historical trends and claim, no, we didn't, it's been happening all along. Surely the reason we have climate change and who caused it is a far diff distant second place to the fact we actually have it, what are we going to do about it? To me, that's just like trying to find out how a person became a drug, ad drug addict, which to me is irrelevant compared to what can we do to get that person off drugs and back into society. So here in the auto world, to me, matters not how we got here. Sad truth is that the ice car exhaust pipes pump out gases that are toxic, damaging to health, and many of them carcinogenic. Nobody denies that. The fight we need to be fighting is how to stop all cars pumping this stuff into the air that we breathe that's killing and maiming ourselves, our children and our grandchildren. There's only one answer, that's to have all cars without exhaust pipes. It's ever so simple, so glaringly obvious. Well, we're now doing it with our electricity grid, that's going green. We're doing it with industry, that's getting greener. We're doing it with our houses, that's starting. Cars should be very much simpler than any of them because we already replace them on a regular basis. All we need to do is make the ones we buy have no exhaust pipes. And that will just happen. Well, is there anybody out there that openly really declares that they want the pollution from exhaust pipes? See, what we need to do, we need to change the narrative. Stop fighting about who caused it. Look at the results. Forget blame. Instead, just ask people, do you want clean air or air that's full of toxic, harmful and carcinogenic gases and chemicals? Well, we've made a start, but those fighting chains need to be made to state openly in public. Yeah, they actually prefer the pollution. They prefer killing themselves. Once we get them to admit that, we should see a rapid turnaround. Simple question. Do you want to... A simple question. Do you want to pollute the air that your family and your children will have to breathe? Yes or no? I'm Dave.